this, and I know that we just got through singing a few Christmas songs, but I've got one more that I want to sing with you, and it's going to be important that y'all sing along with me. It's going to be better for everybody if y'all do. Okay? <laughs> All right. Um, it's, this is, it's the most wonderful time of the year. I believe that's the name of it. Did I get that right? Okay. You ready? I'm going to lead us off, but can you join along? It's the most wonderful time with the wings to your belly and everyone tell you be of good cheer. It's the most wonderful time of the year. It's the happiest season of all. With those holiday greetings and gay happy meetings when friends come to know. It's the happiest season. Does that describe this Christmas season for you? I have a couple more questions for you. I'm not looking for answers. I just want to ask you a couple of questions for you to ponder. Um, how many of you have been waiting and anticipating this Christmas season? And how many of you have been dreading it? I can remember as a kid being so excited about Christmas. I mean, I... We got a week off from school, had, we got presents, my mom would, kick, would cook an amazing Christmas dinner. I mean, what was there not to be excited about, right? But I think if we're honest, there's times in our adult life when, you know, Christmas, can all, we can almost dread Christmas coming along. I mean, for some, it's, you know, financial strains hit you around the Christmas time and you're thinking... You know, man, I said, I'm just going to have to spend money that I don't really have. And for others, you know, you know that Christmas is supposed to be a time of, of family and, you know, hugs and laughter and everybody just getting along. But you know that that's not typically the story in your family. Maybe there's some tension between family members and, and you know, it's just another opportunity for things to get awkward. I think that we all have those situations in our lives. In fact, that's the reality of life, isn't it? <laughs> During the Christmas season, you see the word joy a lot. Alright? But the reality is that a lot of people have a hard time finding joy during this time of year. Uh, Webster's Dictionary defines joy this way. It says, The emotion evoked by well-being, success, or good fortune of the, of the prospect of possessing what one desires. And I think that most people, when they think of joy, this is how they think of joy. It's based on emotions, feelings of happiness as a result of things going well in their lives. If, you know, if things are going well, then they've got joy. If, if things aren't going so well, well, then they don't have joy. And that's how the world views joy. But how should we, as followers of Christ, view joy? And that's what I want to talk to you today about. If you'll turn your Bibles with me to Luke chapter 2, I want to look at verses 10 and 11. Just give me an amen whenever you reach uh, reach this. Amen. Amen. Okay. It reads, Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Here the angel tells the shepherds, I bring you good tidings, which means good news. And this good news would bring them great joy, but not only to them, but to all people, is what the angel said. And listen, this good news to them over 2,000 a year, years ago is still good news to us today. Yeah. That to us, the Savior is born. If we base our joy on temporal things, then when those things are gone, so is our joy. But if our joy is in the Lord, then our joy is eternal because our Lord is eternal. He is the everlasting Father. And with Him there is no beginning and there is no end. And if our joy is in Him, then our joy isn't swayed with, with our circumstances. This is a joy that we can rest on no matter what life throws at us. This is 
everlasting joy. And this isn't fleet, like a fleeting moment of happiness. This is the assurance of our salvation. Listen to what D.L. Moody had to say about joy. He says, happiness is caused by things that happen around me, and circumstances will mar it. But joy flows right on through trouble. Joy flows on through the dark. Joy flows in the night as well as in the day. Joy flows all through persecution and, and opposition. It is, a, it is an unceasing fountain bubbling up in the heart. A secret spring the world can't see and doesn't know anything about. The Lord gives His people perpetual joy when they walk in obedience to Him. See, D.L. Moody understood something about the joy of the Lord. He understood that the joy of the Lord isn't like <coughs> happiness. Because happiness is based on circumstances. I mean, when things are going well, listen, we're happy. But when things aren't going so well, well our joy, our happiness is non-existent. But you see, D.L. Moody understood that the joy of the Lord meant that, listen, in every circumstances, in all circumstances, in every situation, if your joy is in the Lord, then your joy is there even in the midst of hardship, even in the midst of difficulty and trials and tribulations and those hard situations. The old Moody understood that his hope wasn't based on what, how his day went. His hope was based on who his Lord was, who his God was. The angels came to the shepherds and, and they said, Behold, we bring great, good tidings of great joy. For unto you a Savior is born. He said, unto you a Savior is born. So Jesus was born for us. To redeem fallen man. To bring hope into a hopeless world. To shed light where there has been nothing but darkness since the beginning. Jesus came as a Savior to the world. And that is where we find our joy. That is where we find our hope. Not in circumstances. Not in, listen, not in temporal things, things that are fleeting. Our joy is in the Lord, and that is everlasting. Amen. We, can, we can count on that. We can place our hope on, in that. The Word of God tells us that one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit is what? Joy. And what that means is being a fruit of the Spirit, that means that the Spirit living in us, that's what produces what. That's one of the things that, that is produced in our lives. Is the Holy Spirit living in us gives us joy. Develops joy in our hearts and our lives. Now does that mean that we always are, are happy? No. I mean, life is hard. Life is difficult. And tribulations come and they also go. But the joy of the Lord is something deeper than, than happiness. It's, it's deeper than you know a good day or a bad day. That's right. It is our strength. In Nehemiah, it tells us, Nehemiah chapter 8, after the wall of Jerusalem had been rebuilt, Ezra and the other priests and Nehemiah gathered all the, the, the inhabitants of Israel and gathered them together. And Ezra brought out the, the book of the law. And they're reading through the law, but not only reading through the law, but they're <coughs> teaching it to the people. They're instructing them in it. And, and it tells us in one place in, in chapter 8 that, that as they're explaining and instructing the Israelites on the, on the law of the Lord, that the, the people were moved with great sorrow, is what it said. Because, you know, that's what the law does. The law, the law points out our sin, okay? And it shows us our shortcomings and... Here the Israelites were face to face with their shortcomings. And they felt sorrow and grief. And, and the, the priest then came to them and said, listen, don't be sorrowful. They said, go, eat, drink, be merry. Because this is a holy day. And they said, the joy of the Lord is your strength. And that's the thing about the joy of the Lord. It's, it is our strength, as Regina said. It is our strength that... Through hardships, trials, and difficulties, listen, it's the joy of the Lord that gets us through those. Amen. Thank you, Lord. The assurance we have of, of not only our salvation, but listen, that daily we receive grace to live life. Yes. 
Grace upon grace is what the Word of God tells us. Thank you, Not just a one-time gift. It's a one-time gift unto salvation, but it's a, it's a continual gift that we need and receive daily from our Lord. And it's something that we need daily to live our lives, especially when hardships come. Yes. When difficult times happen. So when we think about joy, listen, don't, don't depend on your happiness to bring you joy. Don't depend on your situations in life to bring you joy. They, they can bring you temporary happiness, and that's great. Listen, let's live our lives in such a way where daily we are seeing the goodness that is around us. I, I'm tired of looking at the news and, and all the political stuff. I was telling Nikki the other day, I'm about ready to just get off Facebook. I get so wrapped up and caught up in the, in the politics and everything else. And by the end of the day, I, mean, I feel like I've, just, I've been in battle all day. Where's the victory at? Well, the victory is in our Savior. Jesus. The victory is in our relationship with the Lord. That's where the victory is at. That's where the victory is at. And that's where the joy is at. We have joy in our Lord because our Lord is faithful. To us, the Savior was born. To us, a, a child was given. To us, a son was given is what it tells us in, in Isaiah chapter 9, not chapter 51, <laughs> but in chapter 9. And it says that the government will be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Listen, that was... That was spoken of our coming Savior, Jesus Christ. 700 years before His birth, Isaiah was given this prophecy of who God was preparing beforehand to send to redeem man. And that was Jesus Christ, our Lord. And He is wonderful, isn't He? Yes, marvelous. He is Counselor, right? He's, we can come to him when we're in need, right? And, and find counsel, wise counsel, because, I mean, he's wise beyond our comprehension. And he is not only was he just a great prophet and a great man and did many great things here on this earth, but he's mighty God. Yes. Fully man, but still fully divine. Yes. Even more personal, He's our everlasting Father. The Word of God tells us that, listen, when we give our lives to Jesus Christ, when we give our lives to God, I mean, we are adopted and grafted into His family. We are sons and daughters of God. We belong to Him. And He's our everlasting Father. And His reign will be forever. That's, that's the wonderful thing. Listen, this life that we're living in, with it's full of difficulty, full of trials, full of hardships, it is. That's just life. But it's temporary. Hallelujah. We have a life to look forward to beyond this one. Where there is no more weeping. There is no more sorrow. There is no more pain. There is no more death. And that place is eternal joy. In the presence of our Savior, we'll be worshiping Him every day. Yes. can't wait. I can't wait. There's some people that look at that day and they, they, they dread it. It's not a day to be dreaded if you're His. If you belong to the Lord, listen, that's something to be anticipating, waiting on. Come, Lord Jesus, come. And we all know that the signs are there. That the day is near. And we need to be looking at it with anticipation, God. You know, when, when, when Jesus comes, it tells us that we're going to be caught up into the clouds, into the air with him. And, and he's going to redeem his people. He's going to redeem his bride. And we're going to be sitting around the dinner table of the bridegroom. And there we're going to feast and be merry and joyful because we're going to be in the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're going to be in the presence of God. And all of this, all of this that we go through all the hardships, all the trials and difficulties. It, it'll all be worth it in the end. 
where God tells us, tells us that those who persevere through things, that, that we're overcomers. Mm -hmm. We're more than conquerors. That's right. When we place our joy in the Lord and not joy on our circumstance and not joy on temporal things, when we place all of our hope in Him and, and Him alone, listen, we can be victorious over the things that we face on a daily basis. We can have joy. Unspeakable joy. Undescribable joy. And though we hurt and hardships come, our faith is unshaken. Our faith is unmovable because our faith is in Him. That's right. <clears throat> well, what happens though, church, when we're faced with those hard times and it just feels like, man, we just can't, we can't find that joy? Well, there's certain things I believe that are connected to our joy in the Lord. One of those things is our fellowship with Him. If we're not in fellowship with God, then listen, we're not, in, we're not in a place where we can experience and know the joy of God, the joy of the Lord. And our, and our fellowship with Him is directly connected to our obedience to Him. Because listen, we're walking in disobedience. Listen, we're not walking with God. It's not that we've lost our salvation. It's not that God has left us or moved on somewhere. God is still there. We have walked away from Him. And we have walked away from our fellowship with Him. And, you know, it's only in that time and fellowship with Him that we can truly find the joy of the Lord. That's right. Because if we're walking away from Him, then listen, we're walking away from everything all, you know, the protection, the blessings, the, the joy that we receive in His presence. But when we're walking with Him, listen, we're covered by all of that. And we were recipients of everything that God has to offer us. And when we walk faithfully with the Lord. I like what, what D.L. Moody said at the end of this uh, paragraph that I read to you. It says, the Lord gives His people perpetual joy when they walk in obedience to Him. When they walk in obedience, God wants our faithfulness. Yes. And I know from experience when I, the joy that I have when I'm walking with the Lord and the joy I lack when I'm not walking with the Lord, there's a big contrast, a big difference. So if you're here today and you've been struggling and you know that you have not been experiencing the joy of the Lord, you might want to look at your life. You might want to check yourself and, and say, God, is there anything in me that is not of you, God? Because if there is, show me that I may lay it down before you. I may confess it to you, repent and turn from it. That I may walk in fellowship with you again and truly experience the joy of the Lord. The Apostle Paul says over in Romans, Romans chapter 15, he's saying a prayer for the church in Rome, and he says at the end of this, he says, Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. By the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, we can't, the, the, the joy of the Lord, is, it comes from the Lord, okay? It doesn't come from the, the things of this life or this world. Those things, God can use those things to bless us with and encourage us with, but the joy of the Lord comes from the indwelling Holy Spirit in our lives, comforting, comforting our hearts in the hardships of life, in our most difficult times, ministering to us and, and, and encouraging us and lifting us up and, and, and strengthening us. That's the joy of the Lord. And it comes from the power of the Holy Spirit, as, as Paul is telling the church here in Rome. <coughs> So if you feel like that you have walked away and you're not experiencing the joy of the Lord, then, you know, we need to get on our knees. Me too. You can ask Nick, you know, the past several weeks, man, I feel like I've lost my joy in many ways because of life's hardships. Well, today I'm reclaiming that joy. What about you? Today I'm making the choice that, God, I'm going to walk in the joy of the Lord. And, and it's despite of everything else that's happening around me or... In my life, listen, God, you are still God. You're still sovereign. Nothing has been taken out 
away from you? Are you still in control of my life? I want to read to you one more thing that I found that it's just a, someone had written as a kind of a description of what the joy of the Lord is. And he wrote, Joy is the settled assurance that God is in control of all the details of my life. The quiet confidence that ultimately everything is good to be is going to be alright. And the determined choice to praise God in, in every situation. I know some of you face hardships that I can't even begin to imagine. Sickness, death, loss. There's still a God who loves you. There's still a God who can reach down deep in your heart and give you peace and comfort when you think there is none to be had. Heal your broken heart and mend those things that have been taken from you. That's the God we serve. Our joy can be found in Him once again. Because He's a God of restoration. He restores the broken. He gives life to the broken. Psalm 30. I want to read to you this whole psalm. I read it this morning and it just brought me such calm and comfort. But it's Psalm 30. It says, I will extol you, O Lord. You have lifted me up and have not let my, faith, my foes rejoice over me. O Lord my God, I cried out to you and you healed me. O Lord, you brought my soul up from the grave. You have kept me alive that I should not go down in the, to the pit. Sing praise to the Lord, you saints of His, and give thanks at the remembrance of His holy name. For His anger is but for a moment, but His favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Now in my prosperity I said I shall never be moved. Lord, by Your favor You have made my mountains stand strong. You hid Your face and I was troubled. I cried out to you, O Lord, and to the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my, in my blood when I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it declare your truth? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy on me. Lord, be my helper. You have turned for me my mourning into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness, to the end that my glory may sing praise to you and not be silent. O oh Lord my God, I will give thanks to you forever. Listen, joy comes with the morning. You may be facing hardship right now. You may be facing trials and difficulties, but joy comes in the morning. That's the joy of the Lord. So when we see joy this Christmas season, let's remember that that word joy is far more special to the believer than it is for anybody else. Amen. For the non-believer, they may find their temporary hope in temporal things, but listen, for us who have confessed Jesus as Lord and we are sons and daughters of God, listen, that joy takes on a whole no, no, other meaning for us. Something far greater than anybody else can ever imagine because that joy is everlasting. That means that that joy comforts us and gives us peace even in life's hardships and difficulties. We place our hope on the things of this world or what man can and cannot do. And listen, we place our hope in something that will let us down. But if we place our hope in the Lord, He will never, ever let us down. And around the corner, listen, wherever you're at, whatever you're struggling with, around the corner, place your hope in the Lord, you will find joy again. You will find peace again. Because God is faithful. Always. Always. Always faithful. In all things. You know, I heard one time I had 
I don't know, I think it was Brother Johnny had said something about one of his surgeries and and I commented on there, you know, I said, well, you know, Brother Johnny, God is faithful. Another man commented on there and he said, oh, God is faithful when you're faithful to Him. And I thought to myself, that's not what I see. Because I see God faithful even when I'm not faithful. That's true. That's it. I see God faithful when I'm at my worst. That's right. He remains faithful. Paul said, I'm the chief of sinners. Man, Paul was used by God, was he not? Yeah. God was, I mean, Paul was used in a mighty way by God to bring about the Gentiles and the salvation and build the, the church of Christ. And every one of us here, every one of us is a believer and follower of Christ. God has a plan for each and every one of us. Amen use us for His glory. To accomplish His will and His plan on this earth. And I think for... I see a, a, a decline in the church. I see a lot of people, they, they go to church services, they go home, and they come back on a Sunday morning, but there's nothing happening in between. The decline we see in our nation... I put the blame on the church because the church has not stepped up and said, listen, we're here going to be the light of the world. We're going to be the salt of the earth. We're going to be the city on the hill. And I think it's time, church, I think it's time for the church to rise up and be that, what the church was meant to be. We've let the world influence the church and that was never God's intention. No. Church is to influence the world. We're to be the difference. There's too much hurt out there. There's too much pain. There's too much brokenness. And the only thing that will heal it is the, is the joy of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So I know that's probably not your typical Christmas sermon, but it's what God has placed on my heart. Because I feel like that many of us have a misunderstanding of what joy is. We let our circumstances and situations steal our joy. And listen, our joy is there. Our joy is in the Lord. And when we have, when we've placed all of our hope and all of our trust in Him, then listen, He will get us through the hardships. Okay? Won't you please stand? Ron,